morning, everybody. It is a brisk upstate New York day today. It's probably about 35, 36 now, and I left and said it was 32, and it felt like 32. I can see frost on the windows, but it's probably a touch warmer now. Anyways, um, today we're going to talk about uh, fitness and health. But not in the angle you might be thinking. I'm not going to be preaching to you about dietary things, because I don't know. But um, <clears throat> So, it's just, I, I've uh, done a lot of research on this in the past, and uh, something I've become somewhat passionate about, just because, I don't know, I've always been a little overweight uh, my entire life. Not, not severely, ever. At one point, I got a little chunky, but I was never, like, severely overweight. I was just... A bit overweight, and I still am to this day. Really, I mean, I'm on the I'm on the very much the higher cusp of body fat percentage of, of what you would consider healthy. You know, I mean, I think technically I might not be able to get in the military kind of thing, body fat percentage wise. You know, just to give you an idea. I, I forget the numbers and all that, but but you know, I'm on the upper echelon of that. So it's just you know not a big deal, but it's just interesting to me because right we have this obesity epidemic in this country, especially in America, and. Uh, it's just interesting because it's like, okay, well, why, you know, I wanted, I wanted to know, like, why did that happen? Because, listen, I mean, are people the most responsible eaters? Not necessarily, no, but, like, at the same time, it's like, I mean, people's bodies have the inherent characteristic of wanting to self-regulate the amount of food you eat, right? Obviously, you feel full when you're not hungry. So, I mean, if you eat relatively okay food, or at least what we would consider relatively okay food, why are people still overweight? So you really dig into it. And, uh, guys, it's just, it, a, a lot of it all comes down to, uh, it's just like food quality, man, you know? You, you, you pack all these foods full of fructose corn syrup, and, oh, I have this line still. Um, you know, high fructose corn syrup and all this other stuff, and it's like, it's just so bad for your body that it, it just, it, uh, it, 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 you don't realize it, but even if it's like, even if it's not more calories than you would need to eat, it just like stores this fat. Like, I feel like your body, I'm not, not a nutritionist, so I'm going to do what I said in the video, right, in the beginning of the video that I wouldn't do, but, um, I don't know, I feel like your body stores fat. Like, when I can't figure out what to do with something, it's like, ah, I'll just store some more fat. Like, I don't know, I just, I, if it can't efficiently burn something or it doesn't really like a certain type of food, um, Anyway, I'm getting off track of what I wanted to say. So, I did a little experiment with myself. Um, I started working out in February, sorry, no, May of 2021. So after my back injury, I wanted to really start working out and like, I knew I needed to get fit and, and take care of my back and get some muscle built back up because I'd been, but you know, very sedentary for those first few months. I just was in pain still and whatnot. So I started doing a bunch of different exercises, just like body weight stuff, and nothing, nothing too crazy. You know, try to build up some strength, and uh, you know, and maybe maybe burn a little fat in the process. Now, for the last five, six years plus, probably, I've been like 215 to 225, but really more 215 to 220, um, just on any given day, just kind of depending on what I ate, whatever. Never really went above that. Never really went below that. Um, so I was said to myself, I'm like, well, let's see what we can do, you know? And uh, you know, I, my goal was to get down to 200 pounds. Um, you know, and not go crazy with my diet. I just wanted to see with the working out if I could lose some weight. Well, what I wound up finding was over the last you know, year and a half of, of pretty seriously working out. I mean, not as serious as I should be, but I'm averaging three to four days a week, realistically. Now, that's, that's with some five-day weeks. That's with some zero day weeks, you know, I'm on a vacation or something, so I would say averaging three to four a week, um, which is doable for me, it's, it definitely takes some time, but it's, it's doable, um, and, uh, you know, with that, I, uh, I've just noticed that, I mean, I've gotten quite a bit stronger, um, it's, no, you know, it's noticeable in my daily life how much stronger I've gotten. And I never would consider myself a particularly strong person to begin with. I was always just physically bigger. I'm like 6'1", you know, 215, 220. So I was strong in that sense, but I don't think I was ever strong for my size. I also don't think I'm strong for my size now, but I'm probably, you know, slightly above average or whatever, right? It doesn't really matter. Um, but, but, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, so for example, I could do four push-ups in a row when I first started, because it's just a metric, right? Which is kind of crazy to think, because now I could do, I don't know, last time I tried doing a bunch in a row, I did like 25, and I probably could do almost 30 now, because it's been a while, and I've definitely gotten a little stronger since that last time, but, uh, you know, so like that, and then obviously just different, different, you know, lifts, like much stronger at, you know, than when I started, and stuff like that. But what's interesting to me is, uh, I have less, I definitely have less fat percentage, because I have, you know, more muscle mass, and I, but I still weigh the same. I'm still 215 and 220. Like, on the dot, man. And it's actually more consistent now than it was before. And I just find that so interesting, because it's like, I, I converted some fat into muscle for sure, but I'm still like the exact same way. And I could be 200 pounds, no problem. Like, that would not be too thin for me, even with this level of muscle mass. Um, you know, it's, it's just like, I don't need, I don't need that. There, there's, there's 20 pounds of fat there that could go away. Um, if I lost 20 pounds of fat, that put me in a high, uh, well, maybe not. I don't know. I got to do the math on that. Maybe not 20 pounds, maybe like 10, 15, because uh, I have to look. But anyway, I mean, at 6'1", to be anywhere from, depending on your build, to be anywhere from you know, 185 to 210, 220, I think is reasonable. But I have more of a medium build, so I think I should be somewhere in the middle of that range. Probably 200-ish. 200-ish, you know, running weight, 190, 195, if you were to, like, you know, cut down and try to get real lean, right? Um, which I don't ever care to do, to be completely honest with you. I'd rather, as long I just want to, you know, be healthy and feel good, which I do. I feel, feel really great, and I'm thankful for that. Um, I bust my ass three to four times a week to, to achieve that, and it, and it works. It makes a big difference. It makes a big mental difference. I was never a workout kind of guy. I reveled at the thought of working out. But as you get older, if you want to maintain peak performance, when you get to your late 20s, and especially in your 30s and 40s, you don't have a choice. If you want to be peak performer, you got to work out. And the amount of time I spend working out per week, I, I feel like I absolutely get back on my just mental cognition and efficiency overall. And guess what? The less your muscle musculature you're using just to walk and breathe and exist, you know, the less physically tired your body gets, so you have more energy. Um, and you burn more calories just sitting still because you have more muscle mass. And guess what? You can kind of get away with eating slightly worse. I mean, you should still eat good and clean, but it's a clean ass ram, dude. But you should still eat clean, but it's like you kind of get away with it a little bit more. And uh, so I don't know. It just it gives you a lot of different options, um, and, and it's a, it's a time investment. But it's it's a the return on investment is more than the investment for sure. Now I do think there's diminishing returns, right? If you're trying to bodybuild, like you know, I mean, you'll you'll you'll, you'll wind up looking amazing, but you're going to dedicate your life to it. But that's a whole different thing. I'm talking about trying to keep yourself in a in an average, uh, you know just athletic athletic shape for lack of a better term uh, uh, you know just a functional st functionally strong flexible you know mobile kind of shape um, and the best way to do that uh, if you talk to pretty much anybody is going to be through uh, you know some type of various stretching and yoga and, and exercising um, you know some calisthenics type stuff if you will and uh, a little bit of resistance training and then probably the one thing I'm bad about but definitely a little bit of cardio wouldn't hurt you know dedicated cardio depends on who you ask on that which whatever I'm not again I'm not a freaking fitness expert but just 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 think about it right do balance balance moderation of all different things including what type of exercises you do if you go push heavy ass weights in the gym you're gonna you know you're gonna look like a million bucks and you're gonna feel good for a while but you know you might affect your joints a little bit you also might not if you do it right um, you know, somebody like Jay Cutler, for example, right, famous bodybuilder, and then, you know, he was doing steroids and all that stuff, too, of course, um, you know, which has different effects on your body, but, you know, he, he did it in such a way, and maybe it's just genetics, too, but, I mean, he's in great shape still, and, and it looks good, and presumably feels good, so, it can be done. You can, you can have your cake and eat it, too. You just got to really know what you're doing and, and uh, take care of your body, listen to your body, you know, if your knee hurts, your elbow hurts. Guys, lighten up, you know, lighten up on the way. I know you want to make gains, but don't do it at this expense of your bottle injury because then you're just going to set yourself back and make it worse for the next time you're at the gym. All right, I'm rambling on. Uh, they've said my piece. So thanks for watching, guys. God bless America, and I'll uh, see you on the next one.